Hello, my name is Brandon Mako, and today I'd like to use a SureResult D3 Ultra handheld ultrasound unit to take a quick look at the greater trochanter. So in that location, we should be able to see if there's, you know, trochanteric bursitis. You know, I'm putting those in air quotes on purpose because now we know that the problem is rarely an inflamed trochanteric bursa and there's lots of bursas in the area and it, you can have more than one of them uh, with extra fluid in them and if you see this fluid distension of the bursa you shouldn't think okay that's an inflamed bursa and that's the cause of the problem no there's most likely a nearby pathology and the fluid in the bursa is secondary to that other pathology. Uh, typically, it's a gluteal tendinopathy. Now, I'll be taking a quick look at those tendons, but I'll caution you, I find the hip one of the more challenging regions to get a real good view and to really screen through those tendons carefully. So I'm taking a quick look just to show you you can use this unit to take a quick look. And it will show if there's a lot of fluid in one of those bursas, which you can call, you know, bursal fluid distension. But you have to be really experienced to get a good view and to be really confident about screening through those tendons for the, you know, the tiniest of pathologies, which is similar to the shoulder. You can still diagnose you know, a full rupture, you know, a, a very thickened tendon tendinosis. Uh, I diagnosed uh, calcific tendinosis. So you can do it. I'm just saying the, the tiniest subtleties are hard to identify on the handhelds. Uh, and of course, they're also more difficult to identify um, if you're inexperienced. But of course, you get better through experience. So have confidence. You can at least rule in or rule out the major pathologies. So here we have the greater trochanter. So we're going to start at the greater trochanter. And uh, we can see the facets there. And then, of course, if we, we can follow up the tendons and look in the muscles if we want up here. The patient is obviously lying side lying. So again, greater trochanter. I can come in here. And then I can freeze this image. And that'll give me a good cross-sectional view where I can identify the tendons. And then, of course, I can go long axis to those tendons uh, to check them out and follow them. And, I, of course, I can screen through. Let's consult the good book for exactly what we're looking for. So when we look in cross-section, this is sort of what we're seeing. And we're looking for this, this bony apex. And anterior to that, we'll have the anterior facet. And that's where we'll have gluteus minimus. We'll have gluteus medius here, and this is gluteus maximus, and this is our tensor fascia lata, and these white sections represent the bursas. We have a lot going on, uh, and we can't forget the IT band, which is here. For example, external snapping hip can be a thickening of the IT band, and you can be basically looking at this image and ask the patient to reproduce the motion that causes their snapping hip. And you may see a thickened portion of the IT band snap over this bony apex between the anterior and lateral facets. So since many pathologies involve the gluteus medius tendon, you want to pay particular attention uh, right here. And of course, you can then look at this tendon in the long axis. And of course, if you see an anechoic you know, fluid collection in these locations, that can represent fluid in the bursa. And you may have fluid in multiple bursas. You know, here's a case of that calcific uh, tendinosis. And so here's the anterior facet, the lateral facet. And like, what's that? And you can see shadowing. So it's a calcification of some sort. That's not supposed to be like that. Actually, if, as I continued the scanning, I could find, I did find a small fluid collection of the subgluteus medius bursa, and the tendon itself was abnormally hypochoic and thickened, which is, you know, that's your traditional diagnosis of a tendinosis. So here I am scanning the hip in transverse. I'm using a curvilinear probe. Now, in this hip, you can actually see that I'm only a few centimeters deep. Now, you might have someone that's six, seven, eight centimeters deep where you need the depth and the penetration of the curvilinear probe. In the curvilinear probe, you have lower frequency, which gives you a higher penetration. Uh, but for this two or three centimeters, I can actually switch to the linear probe, which will be higher frequency and higher resolution. Um, and for examining the fibers of the tendon, uh, you know, the higher frequency you can use, the better. So here I have the uh, linear probe now and I'm running at 10 megahertz. And I took off compound imaging because I find I prefer a higher frame rate than better images. Uh, and what we have here is we have on our left is gonna be the anterior facet and on our right is gonna be the lateral facet. And if I take my transducer and go more over the anterior facet, 
I can then rotate into long axis, and I can look at gluteus minimus. There it is. And if I go over the lateral facet, I can rotate and I can get gluteus medius tendon in long axis. Now right now, the tendon looks a little dark, but that's from anisotropy. You can see if I heel toe the transducer, the fibers become bright. And of course, I can move the transducer and uh, screen through the entire tendon. As I created these images of some of the common muscle nuts I find, and there's so many people, I've saved so many people from hip surgeries um, because you find these muscle knots that recreate uh, sometimes pain deep in the joint. And, you know, sometimes pain that is referred to down to the, oh, it's my sciatica, my sciatica. And it's coming from the, one of these myofascial trigger points. And so I push on one of these muscle points and you're like, yeah, that's my pain. That recreates it perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. Yeah, you, know, you hold pressure for 10, 20 seconds, the pain going down, you apply more and more pressure. Yeah, you know, every 10, 20 seconds, the pain goes down, you apply more pressure. Some of have more than one. Uh, but yeah, you know, maybe a couple minutes of applying pressure, you know, schema compression, and of, often you can reduce or eliminate these these myofascial trigger points, and you'll know, they'll get up and be like, oh, I'm cured. <laughs> But keep in mind, these myofascial trigger points can return if you don't fix the improper biomechanics which may have led to them. Uh, similarly, with the tendinosis, um, you know, if something leads to a tendinosis or a tendinopathy, you know, send them to a physiotherapist, send to someone who knows how to do rehab and evaluate gait and evaluate how they're doing stairs. And uh, they may have to strengthen certain muscles. Uh, there might be a muscle imbalance in the quads as well. Uh, so make sure to check all of that. So so anyway, the TFL, that's really important for greater trochanter pain. Uh, and also here, we have uh, gluteus minimus medius uh, and gluteus maximus, myofascial trigger points. So sure result would like me to say that if you're interested in one of their units, that they do their best in terms of the duties and taxes and shipping and getting it out to you in a timely fashion. And if you have any questions, just contact them through WhatsApp. And they've always been very responsive with me.